Liger, the gigantic tragedy. You've heard of lions, the kings of the savannah. You've heard of tigers, the silent assassins of the jungle. But what happens when you take the king and the assassin and force them to create something new? You get the Liger, a monster that shouldn't exist but does. The first recorded Liger appeared in the early 19th century, a product of captivity where lions and tigers were forced to share the same cages. A tragic experiment in the name of curiosity, Ligers are a genetic gamble. Some grow even larger than either parent, suffering from painful gigantism. Others inherit the worst of both. Weak bones and heart issues, a creature designed for spectacle, not survival. But why? Humans saw a chance to create a living legend, a colossal cat, a symbol of strength. But they also created a prisoner of biology. Your body wasn't built for this. Your heart strains with every beat, struggling to pump blood through your massive frame. Your bones ache under your weight. Your organs aren't designed to support your size. You are a paradox, a giant meant to inspire awe burst to suffer under your own mass. The bigger you grow, the shorter your life. Zookeepers call you majestic, but you're just a prisoner in a goldfish bowl. Tourists take photos, children point, but none of them see the pain in your joints, the exhaustion in your eyes. Some countries ban the breeding of ligers, calling it unethical, but others still breed them. A freak show for the curious. You are destined for a short life. Heart failure is a certainty. Mobility problems haunt your final days. Your size, the very thing that made you famous, becomes your executioner. This is the life of a liger, a creature bred to be a giant, only to become a prisoner of its own body. Mule, the reluctant workhorse. It starts with a quiet field and two parents who never should have met. Your mother, a proud horse, tall and strong. Your father, a stubborn donkey, short and steady. And you? You're their impossible offspring. The first mules were bred over 3,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia. A perfect blend of strength and endurance, created to serve humanity. Mules are nature's compromise, stronger than donkeys, more durable than horses. But there's a catch. You are sterile, a genetic dead end. Humans bred you for labor, for plowing fields and carrying loads. A beast of burden, but never a creature of freedom. You can pull their carts, you can bear their weight, but you can never have foals of your own. Your existence ends with you. Nature cursed you for being unnatural, a creature born of convenience, not evolution. They say you're stubborn, but wouldn't you be too? They work you until your hooves crack, until your joints ache. In some places you are overloaded, beaten, treated as nothing more than muscle. And when you are too old to work, there are no retirement pastures for mules. When you are too old to serve, you are replaced. A younger, stronger mule takes your place. Your reward for a life of service? Oblivion. This is the life of a mule, a creature bred for labor, but denied even the chance to leave a legacy. Zorse, the striped disaster. You are born in confusion, a clash of wild stripes and domestic strength. Your father is a proud zebra, your mother a humble horse, and you? You're a Zorse. A creature of two worlds that never truly fits in either. The first recorded Zorse appeared in the late 19th century. A creature meant to combine the best of both parents. But nature doesn't mix so easily. Zorses are genetic chaos. The wild instincts of the zebra clash with the tameness of the horse. You are strong but stubborn, fast but untrainable. Humans love your stripes. A living spectacle. But they quickly discover you're not the perfect blend they hoped for. You kick, you bite, you refuse to be ridden. You are too wild for the saddle, too untamed for the fields. Zoos and circuses become your prison. Tourists stare, handlers struggle, and you remain a creature of contradictions, a beast they can't tame but won't let go. Wolf dog, the conflicted canine. They called you the perfect blend, the wild spirit of a wolf, the loyalty of a dog. But what they got was a creature trapped between two worlds, a ticking time bomb with a wagging tail. The first wolf dogs were bred in Europe, where hunters sought the strength of wolves with the obedience of dogs. But nature doesn't mix easily. Wolf dogs are a genetic roll of the dice. Some pups inherit the calm of domestic dogs, others the unpredictable instincts of wolves. A litter of siblings, but no two are the same. Humans see you as exotic pets, a symbol of status, until your instincts kick in. You are too wild for a living room, too tame for the forest. A family dog one minute, a predator the next. In some places, wolf dogs are banned, labeled as dangerous. In others, they are sold as status symbols until they become too wild to handle. People buy you, then abandon you. Some keep you in chains, some let you loose in the wild, but you don't belong anywhere. Your eyes are wild, a silver glint in the darkness. Your teeth, 
Sharp as nature made them, you look like a dog, but your growl is a whisper of the wilderness. Eventually they give up. They call you dangerous, unpredictable. They call you a monster, but you're not. You're just lost, a creature caught between two worlds. This is the life of a wolf dog, a beautiful disaster bred for a dream that became a nightmare. Comma, the desert miscalculation. You are bred in a lab, designed for utility. Wool like a llama, strength like a camel. But instead, you became an animal that fails both expectations. You are a comma, a confused product of science's ambition. First created in 1998 through artificial insemination. Because a camel and a llama can't breed naturally, your creation was purely utilitarian. Scientists wanted the endurance of a camel with the fiber of a llama. You were supposed to be the best of both worlds, but you got neither. You are too aggressive. Llamas are docile. Camels spit and kick. You took the camel's bad attitude and left the good traits behind. Your wool isn't soft. Your back isn't strong. You cost thousands to create and deliver nothing but trouble. Most camels can carry loads for kilometers. You tire easily. Few commas exist, and those that do live solitary lives in pens, often in zoos that don't know what to do with you. Tigun, the forgotten cat. You are the lesser cousin. The tiger's father, the lion's mother. But while your famous cousin, the liger, is a giant of fame, you are the Tigon, a shadow, a mistake they barely remember. The first Tigon was bred in the 19th century, a failed attempt to create another giant feline. But you are not a giant. You are smaller, quieter, and forgettable. Tigons are a tragic compromise, weaker than both parents, smaller with none of the majesty that humans crave. While ligers become oversized legends, you are an awkward mix. Your stripes are faint, your mane barely grows. Humans call you disappointing, zookeepers look past you, tourists ignore you. You are the forgotten hybrid, a shadow in the corner of the cage. Life in a cage becomes a silent struggle. You are sterile without the fame of the liger. Your existence is a footnote in the history of hybrid experiments. Beefalo the protein experiment. You are a living paradox, a creature bred to be stronger, leaner, healthier, but instead you are a confused beast torn between the wild and the pasture. The first beefalo was bred in the 18th century, a cross between domestic cattle and wild bison. Humans hoped to create a superior source of meat, lean, strong, and profitable. But beefalo are a genetic gamble. Some are too wild, others too tame. A creature of strength with a wild heart. You look like a cow, but your bison blood makes you unpredictable. You charge fences, escape pens, and sometimes attack handlers. Ranchers love your lean meat but hate your wild nature. You are raised for profit herded, and butchered. But your wild instincts make you a danger to other cattle. In the wild, you would be hunted. In captivity, you are harvested. You are a beefalo, a creature bred for efficiency, but cursed with instincts that make you too wild for the farm and too tame for the wild. You were meant to be beautiful, an exotic house pet that made your owners feel wild and powerful. But you are too much animal for any home. You are a savanna cat, a predator in a plush living room. First bred in Savannah the 1980s, cat, the you were the result cat. of a serval, a wild African predator, and a domestic cat. People wanted the look of the wild, the behavior of a lap pet. What they got was chaos. You don't just knock things off shelves. You leap six feet vertically. You shred curtains, raid fridges, stalk small dogs. You're illegal in many U.S. states and banned in several countries. Landlords won't allow you. Insurance companies blacklist you. Families return you. Shelters can't rehome you. Some are euthanized for biting children, killing pet birds, or tearing apart homes. You are too intelligent for confinement. You get bored, you get destructive. Some owners lock you in cages, others give up entirely. Even breeders admit most savannas are miserable in domestic settings. Zonkey, the striped prisoner. You are a clash of instincts. The wild stripes of a zebra and the stubborn strength of a donkey. But your life is nothing but a struggle. You are a zonkey. A creature born of two worlds, but belonging to none. The birth of contradiction. Zonkeys inherit the worst of both worlds. High-strung nerves from the zebra and the stubborn resistance of the donkey. You're not just difficult, you're dangerous. You don't fit anywhere. Farmers can't use you. Zoos don't trust you. You're prone to sudden aggression, resistant to training, and you resist even the most basic commands. Handlers wear protective gear just to get near you. Vets find it nearly impossible to sedate you safely. You are sterile, so you're a one-generation accident. 
often euthanize when you become unmanageable. Children at petting zoos reach out, but one bite, and lawsuits follow. You pace in solitary pens because putting you near other animals, even your parents' species, leads to fights. Your life is one long behavioral red flag.